Time! Thank you, Farouk. <laughs> How's it going, guys? Hardcore Kid here with another episode of the Hardcore Podcast. I'm the Hardcore Kid, and if you think you've got what it takes to make the next champion winning battle bot, show us your Skittles! <laughs> I got my Skittles right here. Those are my brothers. Ugh! <laughs> Get it away from me. <laughs> to my left, I have Otaku Nate. It's, you know, we played the Vader theme. Yeah. In knowledge that Leon White, a.k.a. Big Van Vader, passed away. And for all you wrestlers out there, you may have had some great matches in your lifetime, but you will never be... But how many of you can say that you beat the king of pro wrestling, Antonio Inoki, in your debut in three minutes? Yeah, he was... And I've seen some of his matches. This motherfucker could hit hard. He, he, he could hit as hard as half the bots in this episode. He was perhaps wrestling's greatest big man of all time, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah. So, R.I.P. Vader. So, um, well, we have a couple guests on here. We have Rossetti's replicas. It's replica building time. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to be building any replicas of some of these bots? Yeah. Hell yeah. And of course, we have Ryan Beaver as well. <laughs> Ryan still, Ryan is still procrastinating on his robots time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Speaking of It's Vader time, today's episode was called It's Forklifting Time. It's Forklifting Time! And that's because we had another amazing intro skit in this episode. Uh, I thought it was decent. It wasn't the best skit we saw in this episode. Oh, we'll get to that. But yeah. I'm not just a fan of a skit where it's just one joke repeated over and over again, but... Hey, I like Farouk. He's a great dude. And, you know, Facebook keeps recommending him as a friend, and I'm like, nah. <laughs> I got him as a friend. Oh, you do? Yes. Oh, brother. He's got lots of friends. Yeah. Mm. Me, personally, oh. I make him come to me. <laughs> I'm not... I. You, <sighs> so, before we continue about the Farouk joke, did any, have any of you been paying attention to, to uh, shunt posting lately? I I I, 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 I I left that group. It was uh, too cringy for me. Yeah, well, the, uh, the head admin, Sarah Malin, actually um, sent a message to Farouk asking if he could record a clip of him saying, it's cell phone answering time, and he actually did it. Oh, yeah! Okay. <laughs> cell phone answering time as her ringtone. Uh, Sarah, awesome. It, that would be awesome, but Sarah Malian's gonna kill you for saying her name wrong. It's Malian, not Malin. I'm sorry, I'm not British, and I'm terrible at pronouncing basically anything that's not, you know, basic English. We found that out the hard way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry, but, Sarah! <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> so, episode seven. I will say, uh, so far, these episodes have been very consistent. In that, they've all of them have had a good undercard, but the main event has been <sighs> depressingly mediocre. Anticlimactic is the word I use. Yeah. yeah. Well, but, um... They kind of don't have a choice in the main event. <laughs> yeah, well, it, there, there, there was potential for a match here, and unfortunately, Bite Force was having issues, and then Endgame had some issues, and mm -hmm. yeah, that, that was pretty much it. But before we get on to this episode, we must talk about last, last week's bonus match, which was Valkyrie versus Bale Spear versus The Predator. Or, you know, Valkyrie versus Bale Spear with Predator as special <laughs> guest enforcer. Yeah. Because, as per typical with Craig Danby's machines, he went out early. I, I just don't know what it is about Craig's bots. I mean, he, 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 like, it, basically, it's it's Foxic except painted purple and it has a little crusher on it's it. It's a new machine from what, uh, from what I've heard. It's a, new, it's a new machine, but it, it just stopped again. Yeah, like, it, it just one hit to the side. I'm guessing it just discombobulated the gearbox or something. Mm. Or, or God, God help him if it was the power link. Like, I, 
I keep telling you guys, put tape on that link. Uh huh. I keep. I I was gonna say like he's the Cleveland Browns of robot combat. No, that he's a, he's actually won some matches. Yeah, he's more like the Cincinnati Bengals. He's usually good, good, but when it comes to like prime time, that's when he fl- flames out. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I, I don't understand. <laughs> I, well, I I don't know because I, I will say uh Val um uh Predator no relation to the series four bot unfortunately <laughs> I don't know I like the series four bot I like it too yeah, um <laughs> but um I, it was actually my pick to win this because it, it looked solid yeah, I thought it would I thought it would hold up to Valkyrie's disc and whatever the heck Bale Spear is supposed to do <laughs> but uh <laughs> yeah it, it's unfortunate but. I'm sure the time will come when he actually has... Actually, he does have... Well, his brother does have uh, a match-winning robot, and that was Apex. Yeah. He finally got Apex well, to... He finally got a- a match-winning. <laughs> he got it to work um, at one of the Extreme Robots events, and he ended up um, taking third. Mm, so, nice. There you go. Yeah, thank God it didn't explode. Uh... <laughs> Well, I, I will say uh, Apex does have a, a good, a, a big victory, and that's against the arena. <laughs> yep. And usually the arena always wins. Nope, Apex won. So God, no one died in that. Yeah. So mm-hmm. now, now let's talk about Bale Spear. Oh, okay, I want to say something. I want to say something. <laughs> Bale Spear is a robot where it entered a three-way where it tries to fist people. Oh my! <laughs> uh... it is, like, what is this thing supposed to do? I. <laughs> It's like, it's, I'm getting, like, Spawn of Scudder vibes from it. Only instead of having a wedge, it's just a box with a spike that pops out. I, I thought it kind of looked like a, a, a more low-budget uh, Vladiator. Because it, it's got a, like, I think, I guess the the spike is supposed to lift. It looks like a rich man's version of Brimher from Series 3. <laughs> I don't know. And, yeah. and I, <laughs> they, they took uh, the, the front two wheels off, uh, I guess, because they were no, they were going up against Valkyrie, and they wanted to save rubber. So, kudos to Bale Spear though, like for going the distance. Like even if it didn't last yeah. until the very end, like it put up one hell of a fight against Valkyrie. Yeah, and I, I love the addition of the little um, uh, fist. I, I think that came from <laughs> Tantrum. So, yeah. yeah. So yeah, they work like an actual Bale Spear. They'd be good at that, at least. Yeah. <laughs> so, um. Yeah, I love- it really just looks like a giant piece of angry farm equipment, kind of like the original 1955 Four. It's basically like they would describe it. They described it as a horny piece of farm equipment, and basically that's kind of thing. <laughs> you know what? Uh, you know what? The, their catchphrase is what? Farmageddon! <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. it wasn't the night for the Earl of Pancourt. No. So we'll move on to the actual match winner, well, and but, that's well, well, or... oh, in... oh no. Oh yeah. no, we were going to talk about Valkyrie, right? Yeah, Valkyrie. Um, this is from the Mass Destruction team. They have, they have. Uh, it's basically an upscaled version of Alex Krius's foiled and foiled again. It's a big, it, it like a, it's a big, two wheel drive bot, and it's got a undercutting flywheel under it, it which really like, tears into stuff. It looks like a. To me, I got like, I thought it was a sleeker version of PP three D. Yeah, I think that was the idea. <laughs> I actually yeah. I actually got a comment uh, on one of Fo- uh, my, my match against Foiled again, and they said, "Is this the si- is this spot built by Gary Cairns? Because it, it's <laughs> very familiar." And ironically, I believe PP three D is also three printed, aka three well, D. Yeah, so. it, well, yeah, because the name printed three P- D. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's like what I said. ironically, Foiled has more three D printed in it than PP three D. Well, yeah, isn't that because uh, the builder works at Mark Forge? I don't know. Yeah, yes. he does. Yeah. And I'm still waiting for someone to build a beataway called PP3 Pound. Like, seriously, someone please get on that. PP3LB. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's well, perfect. Ryan passing on an idea. That's new. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I am happy that uh, uh, Fred Moore and um, Alex Krius and everybody else on the team, they actually built an upscale version of um, their smaller bots. Because I've seen uh, a lot of beataweights and antweights, and I think. Oh, these guys could like. I love to see like big upscaled versions of these bots. And uh, uh, Valkyrie, I was very impressed with. Me too. I'm I'm liking it. It's sleek. It's uh, destructive, and I like the team. Uh, yeah, I I honestly think it's it's definitely a really good undercutter. 
I mean, if you ask me, if I'm gonna I'm gonna nitpick on the thing, I am very sad he wasn't able to add the airfoil. He liked like the smaller robots, but you know, considering time constraints and you know probably how to en engineer the damn thing, probably for the best. But ultimately, I thought that was, was a really good robot. Yeah. So this match, mm, <laughs> not much to say. Uh, yeah. Valkyrie got some good hits on Predator, and then Predator just died. She brought the wrath of Asgard upon two inferior beings. And just like what the Predator did to uh, Carl Weathers in the Predator movie, he ripped Bale Spear's limbs off. <laughs> Which, uh, yeah. eh, it's unfortunate, but it, 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 was, it was fun to see. Bell Spear like basically went down fighting. Yeah. That, 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 <laughs> oh you yeah. Know, if that was Valkyrie if that match was in the last episode, it would have get it would have been like from a seven and a half all the way up to an eight. Nah. Because this match was a lot of fun. I loved, I love like the simplistic engineering of Bale Spear up against the more high tech of uh, Valkyrie. Even if Bale Spear lost, I give Earl Pancourt all the, the applause. It's Pancoast, by the way. Oh, Pancoast. Excuse me. Yeah, sorry. Ooh. Yeah, you're close enough that he could come and talk to you. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're not good with names. Mm. Well, I'm better <laughs> at names than Don Cherry. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> you're better at names than Jeff me. Harvey. <laughs> no. So, yeah, that pretty much covers the bonus match. Valkyrie gets the win, and uh, hopefully we see more of it. I actually heard they had an, uh, an unaired fight, but they lost, unfortunately. Yeah, all three of them had previously fought, but for whatever reason, they didn't show it. So they were all coming into the Rumble with an 0-1 record. That sucks. Uh, I mean, that would probably explain that uh, previous fight we saw in the uh, Jurassic World thing. Where, oh, um, God! <laughs> where we, ne we never actually saw that fight. Uh, Double Dutch, Basilisk, and Bale Spear. We never saw that. I think it was an... Un a Double Dutch, added. Basilisk, Bale Spear, and Parallax. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah and uh, Jay probably it, after, it was a tag. It was a tag match, so yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, no. By the way, for uh, I actually saw Jurassic World yesterday. It was okay, but just throwing that out there because it was wrong. I hear it's supposed to be like a haunted house edition of uh, Jurassic World. Yeah, it's basically how I would describe it. You know, Jurassic World meets the Haunted Mansion. It's fun. It's okay, but I thought eh, I would I would still rank it better than Jurassic Park three, but. Mm. I thought the first Jurassic World was way better. Yeah, so, how was Chris Pratt? Oh, he was great as always. <laughs> so yeah, that, uh, that that covers the Rumble, so we'll get to the meat of the actual episode. Starting off with Lucky versus Sao, son of Voyachi. Speaking of meat, it's time for some mince meat. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Lucky. <laughs> Believe it or not, the, uh... When I did my predictions, this was the one match I got wrong. I did too, especially since uh, Sanawayachi got wedged to death in its last round. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, L Lucky uh, basically put a whole bunch of aesthetics on to try and protect the wheels and the back. It didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> Sanawayachi yeah. just tore everything off well, it. I was surprised that, that Lucky was still going for so long. That thing's built like a tank. Well, that's the idea. Yeah. It's like it was like it's it's like oh look that wedge is gone oh look that wedge is gone oh look <laughs> its wheels are gone oh now it's dead <laughs> yeah although a part of me is happy that son of Voyachi got the win because it, it was disappointing how it went out in the last match but here it, it went in it did what it's best at and then uh, it basically tore Lucky to uh, it basically tore to four leaf clover yeah shredded yeah, it problem. like. <laughs> Tore it up like a kid with a maple leaf in a leaf pile. Hearts, stars, horseshoes, clouds, and blue moons. I remember, I remember it being uh, rainbows, wasn't it? It's yeah, clovers. It was clovers. Yeah. Let's face it, breakfast is ruined. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you know, I talked about how Farouk last episode was kind of okay with his promos, but this tonight though, he that Lucky Charms one gave me a good uh, chuckle. Yeah. <laughs> Farouk, I, think, I feel like Farouk has just gone all out this series compared to the previous two. It's amazing how he's able to come up with all these intros, because he has to do, like, what, 200 matches or something? I have no idea. Yeah. Around, like, I'd estimate, like, around 120 or so. Yeah. Uh, this, was glor this was a gloriously destructive match, just pieces all over the place. Wow. Um, I, I, I was happy with the end result, because I love... Sonawayachi. It's easily one of the most visually appealing spinners in the whole competition. 
Mm. And, and it's one of the few, like, old machines still going. Like, a, a lot yeah. of robots come and gone. Son of Oyachi is still sticking around. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's great to see the Yort family, you know, winning this season. I, I like the Yorts. I like their machines. I hope both Warrior and Oyachi do well. Yeah. So, Son of Oyachi gets the win and goes one and one right now. So. Absolutely dismantles Lucky. <laughs> And we move on to our good friend Jameson Go taking on Mohawk with Sawblaze. He just saw Sawblaze last week, and already we're seeing him again. Well, hey. they finally figured out Sawblaze is money. Hey, I love <laughs> Sawblaze. You kidding me? I love it. Absolutely yes. oh, yeah. love Sawblaze. Hey, I'm not complaining. I'm just pointing out facts. <laughs> yeah, this was this was basically like an extended version of Sawblaze's match against Overhaul. Mm -hmm. It just just kept slicing and slicing and slicing into it, and honestly. There wasn't really much Mohawk could do, because Sawblaze is such an awkward-looking design. It's th th There's not really much it can grab onto. JMO has figured out how you build an overhead Sawbot. Like, it's pretty much the whole body, while not the particular shape of it, it's one big wedge. Mm. <laughs> like, you can't get around it. If you try to go for the sides, you get stuck up on the, the slopes of the forks. Like, he, like, it is the perfect shape for trapping robots. My only complaint about Sawblaze, I'm loving it, I love it to death, but it hasn't faced a big spinner. That's my only concern. Like, we've yet to see how it'll do against, like, a Bite Force or a Monsoon or a, a Tombstone yeah. or a Son of Waiachi. But so far, so good for JMO. Yeah. And th and he's also the first person, at least in the series, to be recorded so far to go 3-0. Yay! 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 So Top 16 is in sight. In the, in the uh, championship. Yep. Now, the big question is, do you think Sawblaze can go all the way? I hope so. It, I love it's top eight material for me, but we'll see. Again, we have it has yet to fight a big spinner. Yeah. Ian, what yeah, do you think of Sawblaze? Yeah, awesome robot, but yeah, very delicate. Um, spinner, I guess spinner, if they lose their saw, like, right away, they are in big trouble. Mm. Yeah. Now, uh, Mohawk, uh, wasn't actually beaten by the saw, but actually it was flipped right <laughs> up against the wall, which leads to a, a little r running, uh, theme of this episode, and that was robots getting stuck on their weapons, a.k.a. the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it, got, it, it loses by getting stuck on the wall? What is this, Robo Games? <laughs> you know, uh, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of events, uh... You know, you know, st stacking might be a bit unfair, but sometimes it's the only way to beat, like, a different bot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, like, when I went to uh, the Ohio event, I fought uh, a, a machine, and I stacked him up against the wall, but um, he, he was missing a tire, so if it had kept going, I probably could have done more damage to him, so. There's only one way to put a robot out, and that's either out of the arena or against the arena. You're a good yeah. sport, Mr. Nichols. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one thing about this fight that I, that I was kind of sad about. Mm. And that's that um, I was really hoping that Sawblaze would be able to cut into one of the uh, propane lines of Mohawk and ignite the gas setting the whole robot on fire. <laughs> oh, that would have uh, been great. Would have pulled I a gloomy. I was so hoping for that to happen. Yeah, JMO, he's come close. He's come close, but he hasn't quite achieved the level of Sawblaze. Oh, no, no, no. Gloomy versus hyperactive. <laughs> I want to see some 420 blazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, uh, Mohawk, it, it tried to hang on in there, but there was nothing it could do. I like the little, uh, uh, was it, uh, uh, fuck it, what, what was it, uh, oh, what, what was the material they put on the there? It was... Kevlar. Kevlar, yeah. That's mm -hmm. the same material they use for bulletproof vests, and yeah. it kind of yeah. helped. But um, yeah, but, well, it's perfect for Sawblaze because, as JMO told us, it doesn't like uh, metals that gum up the saw. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The problem like, was that JMO. Reminds me of, um, Mort Mo Mohawk reminds me of Mortis in that sense. They're both armored in Kevlar, and they're both huge disappointments. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to any of the Bales family, but I just had to make that joke. Uh, you gonna say something, Ian? No, we, yeah, we... I was gonna say that the Kevlar was. Kind of not that useful because when JMO brought the saw down, he'd be bringing it down on the crusher rather than on the areas that they covered. Mm. Yeah. It's a testament to how good a driver J JMO is. Oh, yeah. 
Mm. Give credit where, where credit is due, though. Mohawk at least knows how to put on a light show. Yeah, that exactly. Fire, that fiery Mohawk is ridiculously cool. We'll yeah. be seeing more Mohawk later on in the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. So, yeah, Salt Blaze gets the win and is the first robot this season to go 3-0. and So, congrats to JMO. I, look, I hope to see him in the championship, but he's got one more match to go, and ho- hopefully uh, we'll see what he's got in his fourth match. So, so now we move on to Whiplash versus Mecha Rampage, and... Yeah, the, the the match didn't last long. I still have no idea what Mecha Rampage is supposed to be. It looks like Propeller Head if it grew a if it grew a pair of legs. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I, w- I was I, uh, or you go, Ryan. I I like the idea behind Mecha Rampage, putting all the like you know batteries for the spinner inside the spinner to you know add more mass. But I also feel like that it technically makes it more fragile. You got all those centripetal forces on all the electronics. It feels like it's gonna. It, it would really just break at any even point. If that beam is, if that beam up above it gets damaged, I'm just picturing this. I'm just p- seeing it pulling an apex. At least, at least, at least, cut that in half. Oh, that would be. Fantastic. Oh, that would be yeah. hysterical. <laughs> or Scorpios. Yeah, we've only seen one Scorpios match this season. Hopefully, we see them in the next episode. Yeah, mm-hmm. ironically, both Scorpios and Sawblaze have yet to come c- cut someone in half, and then Ice Wave, beat, Ice Wave beats them to the punch. <laughs> now, Whiplash uh, was was pretty much the perfect design to fight Mecha Rampage. It had the wedge. It was it was able to get the lifter underneath um, the the spinner. It flipped it up against the wall. Mecha Rampage did the thing, and that was basically it. Mm-hmm. I was disappointed that it didn't go for, like, another hit or so, but considering that, that Whiplash has two fights left, uh, I, it was for the better. Yeah. It's like, so some teams um, are taking it easy because they know they have a couple more matches to go and they don't want them to get too badly damaged, and that kind of takes away from, like, the entertainment factor of just seeing a robot get completely wrecked, but this I is think... a comp, this is, um, this is uh, a competition and these teams want to win, and the Vasquez family, Matthew, he wa- he wants to win this whole thing. He-, he had to do what he had to do, and that was to take Mecha Rampage out and go two and zero. Hopefully, we see some more destructive antics in the in the um, bracket once there's once there's basically um, you know nothing left to lose. Oh, yeah. I think that as we go on, we're going to be seeing some more great hits, good hits, I should say, good hits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so absolutely spectacular. <laughs> So Whiplash gets the win over Mecha Rampage to go 2-0. and I hope you guys enjoyed last week's chop match, because we got another. Oh. Uh, <laughs> you know, as I said, you know, you mentioned Mortis earlier. No, the Mortis of this series isn't, um, oh, wh- who'd you say? Mecha Mohawk. Rampage? Mohawk. Yeah, Mohawk isn't the Mortis of the series. Chomp is this, is this, ver- <laughs> is the U.S. version of Mortis. Oh, that's right, because Mortis was also excessively over-engineered. <laughs> and an <laughs> action. I mean, at least Rapid, even if they they went, they went just went out due to unfortunate circumstances in Series 9, but in Series 10, you know, you see where all that money went, and you're like, ah, now yeah, that's, that's why it, <laughs> it's over-engineered, but it fits Josh Valman so much. With Chomp, though... You need to learn, as I said last week, this team really needs to learn their lesson. Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> because yeah. every time this thing throws its axe, the whole robot just goes right I'll, over. I'll give them credit for this uh, match, though. The match wasn't 80% of it stuck on its side. No, it wasn't. It, it managed to get a few good hits in towards yeah, the it, end. Yeah, so. it, it looked like it had KO'd overhaul at the end, but it just uh, wasn't enough. Oh, uh, yeah, they were just I was, seconds too I, late I for that count. I was panicking during that. Oh my god. Me too. Yeah. I, I, I thought I thought maybe they got stuck in a set screw again, and I'm like, no, not again. <laughs> not again. It, they, it, they hit them right in the rear, which is how John Reed uh, knocked out Overhaul last time. Mm. Yeah, so th- the match was Chomp versus Overhaul. It's really hard to believe up to this point Overhaul has only won one match, because it's such a yeah. beautiful design. Charles Guan is a great driver. He's got he's got a great character as the crazy blue haired otaku. I'm honestly surprised why so many people don't like him because I like Charles Guan and I hope that we can have him on our show. Yeah, I'm sure. It's because sure people are still salty about that whole you know about that stupid handshake thing from the first season. Like three that was years three ago. years ago. 
It's over. It's, yeah, it's not like you know, some, it's not like someone in sports doing drugs or beating a beating a, a spouse or anything. It's just a simple misunderstanding on TV. Like, come on. He's not He's Jose not Reyes or Slava Voinov. <laughs> yeah. Or Ray Rice or Jeff George. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but um, let me tell you. Um, but yeah, overall, I personally was very happy during this fight. It was also really nice to see some old-fashioned Charles again, just his, his driving. Like he constantly just is a very showy driver. Like at the Nurk events, he always basically just tries to put on a show, smashing your people against the wall, against the ground. So it was really nice to be able to see that again without him getting stuck or being destroyed by a spinner or hammer. You know what my favorite move of uh, Uber Clocker or Underhaul is, as I like to call beating it? A, beating a robot with another robot? <laughs> uh, that, but uh, also he does uh, the Cesaro swing, where he just spins around and around and around with the robot. The giant it. swing? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That, that's fantastic. <laughs> I still remember at um, uh, Mass Destruction last year when he brought Overhaul and fought all the three-pounders, someone actually threw a hammer from one of their robots. <laughs> oh, my God. And he actually picked up the hammer with the claw <laughs> and just spun around. That was oh. amazing. I, I love he that. Say the hammer was the winner of that rumble. As <laughs> as <it was> <laughs> uh, that, that that was great. That, that, that was one of the best rumbles I've ever seen. Yeah, and just... I, have, I, I think Charles is a great guy, and I love Overhaul. So, uh, so when, you know... At the end, when he kind of conked out there, me and my mom were watching the show, and we were both, you know, on our edge by the, the, the decision, and we were just cheering our butts off when we heard <laughs> Overhaul win. Like, I have nothing against Zoe Stefan, but Charles I've known for a longer time, and Overhaul just needed the win, man. Like, yeah, yeah. It's been too long. He's literally been that screwed over for the past two years. Man. Uh, Chompa... I, I give I give it a bit of credit. It was starting to come back at the end, but mm -hmm. like Nate said, it's just too over engineered. There there was a point uh, in the match where Chomp uh, went over by the screws, and I guess uh, the autonomous system decided, okay, there's something here, so it fires the ha the axe right at the screws, and then just flings itself over. And it's like this this thing is just out of control. There is there is no control. The the, the robot thinks for itself. It, yeah, and it it, it just it, ta it just the axe just fires at bad I, times. I and feel that autonomous crazy. engineering can work for combat robots on a smaller scale, like in the beetles and the ants. But on the heavier scale, where like you need more control over your robot, I just don't think it works out. Yeah, and I feel like that the one of the hardest things to uh, take take into account when it comes to things like uh, range sensors is having to to tell the difference between a moving robot and the wall. <laughs> which yeah. it's like okay you know just track moving object oh yeah wait a minute we have screws in the corner <laughs> yeah i think it needs to uh move faster to really get that targeting thing working because like the keep away that they that we saw them trying to do against warrior was just not responsive fast enough to get it to be any good yeah wow. But uh, overall, managed to get uh, the win. Uh, it was a squeak win. Uh, I, it wasn't actually a set screw that made him lose drive. Apparently, um, something went wrong with one of the wheels or the speed controller. I think Chomp managed to land a good hit on the side, and then the yeah, drive that, just started messing up. That sounds up. logical. Yeah, overall, has been having like all kinds of weird technical issues th throughout the season, and. It almost cost them, but thankfully that they were able to get the win. And I'm happy for Charles finally getting a win with this monster. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I dubbed those electrical issues brushless rage quit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the rage bridge quit again. But uh, I, and uh, the best moment for this match was definitely when Overhaul put Chomp on the kill saws. I mean, it's a, <laughs> yeah. it's it, it's always great when we see the hazards. Mm -hmm. Although at one point I think Overhaul got stuck on one of those stupid little spikes on the ground. Ah. Uh. Those, those things are so useless. And, and when they do come into use, they're annoying. Basically, Robot Wars Series 3. <laughs> or Series 10, if you want to include uh, the uh, bit bits where they, they managed to take out the bots. But, yeah. At least they're not that bad. But yeah. So, overall, gets the win over Chomp and goes 1-1. One one. Chomp goes 0-2. So, we move on to the main event. 2015 champion Bite Force against Endgame. Mm -hmm. The Kiwis. But, uh... Oh, what a frustrating match this was. Yeah. I can't even call it a match. 
It, it, but basically, the, 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 there was one big hit between the two of them. Endgame just goes flying. Bite Force stops. And I don't know if it was a radio issue. I, it seems like it was a radio issue, given that Paul had yeah. to move. He had to move. I think he had to turn his remote on and off again. I, yeah. I, could, I couldn't see, but I think uh, sometimes that's what you have to do to try and get the signal again. I've but um, on and off again. <laughs> and I don't know if, if I was Endgame, and I don't. This might be a bit unsportsy, but um, if I was Endgame and but the match ended after one hit, and it's the main event, I would have tried to put in a bit more showmanship. Yeah. Maybe hit Bite Force and flip it upside down. Yeah, like get, 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 when 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 Bite Force wasn't moving, I I feel that Jack Barker should have just gone in, put a few hits on uh, Bite Force, just to see what it goes, and then out of nowhere, Bite Force starts moving again. It gives uh, End Game one good hit, and it just just gets stuck on its disc. It does the thing, and that was it. The thing was three and zero tonight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It has the same same record as Bite Force and Saw Blaze right now. It, or no, it has even more, I think. Cause, cause it's... it's two and one. Yeah. Actually, Bite Force is now three and oh. Yeah, Bite Force is three and oh. Yeah. Saw Blaze is three and oh. It, it was, yeah. It, it was disappointing because Endgame is a great machine. It, it, it's basically the US, it, not the US, but the New Zealand equivalent of um, Aftershock. Aftershock. Yeah. Jinx. <laughs> but yeah, it got, it got the jinx. It just... Got flipped upside down and just couldn't get back up. Like, uh, apparently, um, Jack Barker, I think it was, uh, said that they were afraid of hitting Bite Force because they were afraid afraid it might come back to life again. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Things built like a tank. I mean, free hit sounds good, but it might not necessarily kill it. Nah, it's unfortunate. But I would, yeah. I mean, I'd do whatever was guaranteed was a was most likely to get me the win because, like, I mean, for a newbie who's in that league system, like beating Bite Force is a huge bounty. Mm. By the way, did any of you catch what uh, Chris or Kenny said at the beginning of the fight between Bite Force and Endgame? No. They said that uh, Endgame is an FMB champion. Oh. Yeah, yeah they they acknowledged the existence of Fight My Bots in nice. China. Awesome. But yeah, that that was uh, so. Bite Force goes three zero, but Endgame is two and one, so they still have a chance. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah, one, or, or, one thing that still um, bothers me about Endgame, why the heck did they not make it invertible at all? Like, you, you, you can't has, make like, it invertible. Huh? You it, can't make it invertible. Or at least, like, put some sort of arm on the back to keep it from uh, popping wheelies. Uh, it's kind of tough to do. Or put, like, a roll cage on it. Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> Whiplash has the idea. Like, it, it's a spinner, but it has the lifter as well. So, so if it does get flipped upside down, it can just use the flipper to get back up. So. Well, yeah, but even Bite Force, you notice it has a rounded back, so it can easily run inverted. Yeah. So that's something that I feel like if Endgame did, like a, a, like a rounded back, it probably would have would have at least lasted a little bit longer. Plus, those spikes don't help either. Mm-hmm. Like, I think well, maybe those were to help, because uh, I know the, the, the disc uh, w- does work as a Shremek, so, so it is able to spin its way back onto its wheels, but... Apparently the disc stopped working, and that's why I just couldn't get back up. Mm-hmm. It's a shame. Uh, but I will I will say, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the skit. You want to talk about the Mohawk skit? Oh, let's talk about <laughs> this. This was incredible. So, as you know, Brandon and I were big fans of uh, Tim from Concussion and now Monsoon. Moon. Um... Because he's, he's just an overall great guy. And, you know, if I ever go to England and I bump into him, I'm buying him a beer. Like, he's just a great guy. So, I don't know if uh, Matt agreed to this or whether they like it was just something they pitched to the producers. But they decided, you know, hey, the robot's name is Mohawk. Tim's got a Mohawk. Why doesn't he give me a Mohawk? And so, <laughs> we get this hilarious sketch where Tim is cutting Max Bale's head with a razor blade. Or hair, excuse me, cutting his head. That, that's a, if he was cutting it with a razor blade, funny. he'd end up like Raven from that hair match in TNA. <laughs> where he uh, scalped him too close and had blood everywhere. Oof. Oh. Yeah. Thankfully, that didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's like he's trying to give him a mohawk. And then out of nowhere, you just hear Craig Danby says, You know that thing's done professionally, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, yeah, it, it was fun. 
Yeah, well, he realizes halfway through. Mohawk. Wait a minute, Tim didn't give himself a mohawk. <laughs> yeah, and if, if and I'm losing my hair, so if he decided to do it, he'd probably have to give me a reverse mohawk like the guard in The Wizard of Oz. Or you'd have to. <laughs> Who rang that bell? Or you'd have to go for the double mohawk like Road Warrior Hawk or the Vader. aforementioned Vader. Yeah. R.I.P. <laughs> Vader. Yeah, or you could just run the bald look. Works for, works for Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> yeah, that reminds me. I gotta go get a haircut after this. So. Or a buzz cut. <laughs> buzz cut. We're... Yeah. Yeah, but... Yeah, that pretty much covers this episode. Um, again, it was uh, a good undercard, disappointing main event. I'm gonna give it a... Seven, I guess? Seven and a half. The half point comes from... The half point comes from that mohawk sketch. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan? Uh, I'd say give it about 7.58. I honestly am just really happy that, you know, they're including these sketches. Because it actually adds a bit more humanity to the builders. They're not just, like, you know, faceless machine builders to show, oh, wait, these are people who are just trying to have fun. Yeah, like, last week, they didn't show it on uh, the Discovery Channel. It was on the Sci-Fi Network. But um, they showed a... Uh, a bit with uh, Tommy interacting with uh, the Petunia team after the battle. Just seeing how much damage it did. <laughs> and we got the uh, classic bit where, um, you know, Monsoon hit uh, Petunia so hard that it got a bit of Petunia compl- permanently wedged uh, onto <laughs> its blade. Yeah, that was cool. Ian, yeah. what what's your rating for this episode? Yeah, I'm going to seven as well. I think it was a very middle-of-the-road episode. Um, love saw blaze um, but the rest was um i suppose average yeah. well, like, again the, the season's been very consistent like we've been i've been constantly giving these episodes seven to eight i think i think uh i gave the first episode a nine me too, we did yeah but we've but... Been, but like the it this has been perhaps one of the best seasons of battle bots we've had for so for some time and i really hope that they keep this format going forward if they keep going forward that's yeah. the thing yeah. Oh yeah. Like it's good. Every every machine uh, gets four matches, and then they can uh, go on to a championship. They can do a lot of fighting, and all, 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 a lot of them all get screen time. So, yeah. I actually, this is my favorite tournament format. Period. Even at live events, like I don't, like I I really can't see them doing like something like this at Motorama just because the sheer amount of bots. But we get like two. We get like two hundred bots them. every year. Yeah, That's and plus you can't fun. just weld them. <laughs> no. That's love this format because it really just gives everyone a time to shine and it's, it's been a lot of fun so far and i'm really enjoying it speaking of battle bots you know who we saw in the crowd we saw a picture of in the crowd yes we did we saw a picture of bill dwyer yeah oh. and and uh we also had grant imahara from mythbusters uh, as a judge and yeah. uh, who's the blue-haired guy like was he like? Is he like some kind of robotics expert or something? Because like, which blue haired guy? Not Charles. Not Guan, Charles but... Guan. Um, I gotta find a picture of them. Was it? Was it? Uh, who was it? The, oh, the guy uh, on the far da, right. Da, 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 da. Happy Hunger Games and maybe I don't, I, I don't know. Whoever the blue haired judge is. Mm. Yeah, I I don't know. We'll we'll find it someday. Someday. Got to hold on for what we got. Enough, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think uh, with that said, uh, that brings us to the end of this particular episode. Mm-hmm. Another solid episode. Episode 8 comes again this Friday. We've got a bonus rumble. Um, uh, Basilisk versus Deviled Egg versus Axe Backwards. We'll be talking about that uh, for the next week. I'm going to go with... I did say Basilisk, but I think I might go with Deviled Egg. I'm going to go with Basilisk. Yeah. Because uh, ba- Basilisk, I think, uh, we we saw it last uh, last season, and the flipper seemed kind of small, and it looked like they were having control issues. So I don't know how well it's going to do this year. So Deviled Egg ha- had, a, had a good chance in the last Rumble, but unfortunately got knocked out by Shark Oprian. So. Mm-hmm. And Axe Backwards yeah. is Barbarous. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah. And please, all I can hope is that they do something with Shark Opry and when Shark Week comes along. Oh. Uh, to, <laughs> when I, is Shark Week? That, they, that something happens with Shark Opry. 
Uh, I think they said Shark Oprian's going to be facing Double Jeopardy at some point. I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you got to do that for Shaq week. <laughs> Shaq <laughs> happens. So, yeah, that, that pretty much covers this episode. Uh, another fun oh, episode. Oh. All right. Um, I, I just found the uh, judge's name. His name is Bobak Ferdowsi. Oh, yeah. He's the bot breakdown guy. They... They had him in season one, like, with those, you know, 3D diagrams of the robots ah. and all the pieces breaking out. Hmm. Oh, I mean, the thing is that were never used because they wanted to focus on the drama. Yep. You know you know how uh, what, how they're randomly now showing uh, strengths and weaknesses for some of the bots? Like, what is this? Robot Wars season five to seven? <laughs> I don't know. It's like, mm, it's and it's kind of weird though. It's like either can you can you either do this with all the robots or none of the robots? Like, please, like, come on, be so mm. consistent. I guess they only think the main event bots are interesting enough for that. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, no one ever cares about what what huge stats are or anything like that. <laughs> stats are exposed tires, destructive weapon, high clearance. I, I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, but that pretty much covers this episode. I'll um. I'm looking forward to the next episode. There's no card yet, but um, it sh should be fun. And um, it was good having you guys on. Hey, it was good being here. Yep. Well, maybe we'll have you on next week. I don't know. We're going to have to find out who's going to be in the next episode. And yeah. We'll, we'll have a guest on. And still no Warhead yet. Uh, apparently, mm -hmm. they, they came to the event late, so they weren't able to have any matches yet. But ho hopefully, yeah. we'll see them. And I believe they're fi going to be fighting Blacksmith. So oh, that, that, boy. it's going to be a battle of the flames. It's going to be a very hot <laughs> match. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So until next time, I'm the hardcore kid. I'm Otaku Nate. I'm Ryan. I'm Ryan. Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, eventually that had to happen. <laughs> I'm Rossetti's replicas. And I'm Ryan Beaver. Peace out and cease. It's sign-off catchphrase time!